Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff, you know, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. All right, we're at the master cylinder on our 2012 GMC Terrain brake fluid cap. Just twist on, twist off. Not too tough. It's got a minimum and a maximum on the side. Just want to keep an eye on the level on this. If you're collapsing pistons, you don't want it to overflow. Brake fluid can damage paint. It'll take a while, but it can damage it. So keep an eye on the level. The turkey baster or a clean, lint-free rag, something to uh, maybe suck the fluid out. Keep it from overflowing somehow, and you should be fine. And then, of course, we'll top this off at the end, somewhere between the minimum and maximum. Maximum right there. So, well, let's get to the brakes. So it's a T30 Torx bit for the screw that holds the rotors on. Some of the tools I'll be using, a screwdriver, 17 millimeter wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench or ratchet and socket. Got a nice set of ratchets, plus a half inch breaker bar, half inch torque wrench, and half inch size sockets for the lug nuts. I to get my screwdriver in here and collapse the piston. We can check for, make sure the piston's not seized and make sure the slides are good. Just gonna pry in against the, uh, probably the rotor in there. There's a little bit of an edge you can get on the inside here, so collapse the piston. You can see it's working real nice in the slides. So we can check everything right there quick. <clears> that <throat> uh, should be reasonably confident uh, that we can be reasonably confident we don't need calipers. Things sliding and collapsing. Fourteen millimeter and seventeen millimeter. You just slide that off, leave this, and if you need to collapse this, you can probably use a large channel lock like I have down here on the floor, or a C-clamp. Put a brake pad in here, you want to use brake pads, and then squeeze it with a C-clamp, and uh, finish collapsing it. A little springing action on the pads right here with these fingers, right here. Don't need to take them off really, but I'm just showing you. And then we'll take off the two bolts, 14 millimeter bolts, for the caliper bracket. <clears throat> and then we'll get the rotor off. My bolts are 15 millimeter. tight fit here so I'll just be using a 15 millimeter wrench it's actually a ratchet wrench Clean these or replace them with some uh, 
maybe some soap and water, a rag and some brake clean. Caliper. Caliper. Crack it. Add a little extra lube to it. Didn't look too bad, so we'll add lube. We'll put the purple lube on the other uh, post as well that's still on the vehicle. Just like that. You can put the pads in now or later if you want. Pretty much like that. And we can slide them in and out as we need to to get the caliper uh, bracket back on there. And we'll get the rotor off. Might need to tap it off, a little bit of rust there. And we'll find the emergency brake pads in there too. E-brake shoes look fine. Let's give them a little cleaning with some brake clean. And uh, probably be good to go. Need to get some more of that. We'll clean this off and uh, should be all right. We're ready for reinstallation. These are coated Raybestos rotors, I guess, and you don't need to clean them. However, if you get regular rotors, they do usually have an oily film on there, and you want to clean it off with some warm soap and water or some brake clean and a rag. Just clean it off on the surface here. Also, since we're doing rear brakes, maybe you want to clean the inside surface here with your warm soap and water and just dry it off with a rag, should be just good to go. And uh, we'll just throw this on the car. We do want to transfer the little inspection plug, I believe, or adjuster hole for the e-brakes shoes. Right there, a little plug will transfer from the old rotor to the new one. Right there. <clears throat> we'll just pop out with a screwdriver. Hello. Good. Line up the bolt hole for our torque bolt. If you don't have that bolt, you probably don't need to worry because many manufacturers do not use bolts to hold down their rotors. A little lubricant on this post here, so we're ready to reinstall our caliper. If you have a little blue Loctite, you can certainly use it, buy it. I don't necessarily think it's required myself. There was a Something on the bolt here, pink color. If you torque everything down or get things tight, I don't think they'll fall off. Start all bolts by hand.
So that is replacing your rear brake pads, rear brake rotor, 2012 GMC. The GMC terrain will go up and uh, double check our brake fluid level as we've seen and then we'll pump the brakes a few times to make sure the pistons are pushing out and everything's collapsed before we drive it. Alright, the bigger bolts are 92 foot-pounds for the bracket and then uh, looks like 20 foot-pounds for that bracket there. Nuts are 140, 140 foot-pounds. You want to crisscross them when you're tightening them. Put the uh, vehicle on the ground uh, so the tire's touching so it doesn't spin, then uh, snug them up and then once they're pretty snug then I would go ahead and let them put the vehicle down the rest of the way and then tighten them to 140. Good luck to you.